Back in to talk all about the Southeast. This is the Y'all Show with John Rawl, and we cover all of the South, the music, the food, the goings-on, the sporting events, the history, and more. And there's one little special portion of the South that is really, really unique. It's the Mississippi Delta, and that northwestern quadrant of the state of Mississippi is where you will find incredible blues music history. You also have great characters that come from there. You also have incredible food. And to help us with what happens in the Mississippi Delta is Ashley Stinson. She has just penned an article at y'all.com where she covers all things Mississippi Delta. And guess what? Miss Ashley is right here on the Y'all Show to tell us all about it. Welcome in to the Y'all Show, Ashley. Thank you, John. I'm excited to talk about the Delta with you today. Well, I'm excited to have you talk about the Mississippi Delta. So we'll start off first things first, a little bit about you and your background. You are, I believe, a North Alabamian. Am I right on that? Yes, absolutely. And did you know much? You grew up within a couple of hours, well, a tank of gas. It'd have to be one of these uh, more modern cars. But you grew up about a tank of gas away from the Mississippi Delta. How aware were you growing up of this unique part of the South? Well, I was a big reader growing up, so I mm-hmm. really attribute um, that to finding out more about the Delta. But mm-hmm. I also lucked out because my neighbor um, and a close member of our extended family, Lucy Harper, um, grew up in Memphis. Um, and her dad, Frank Crawford, was a federal judge there. Um, they just are born and bred Memphis. Um, and she's also a huge music person. So she really influenced me. Um, and I've just loved the Delta ever since. Okay. Do you remember your first trip there? Yes. Um, the first time I got to spend a lot of time in the Delta was actually about three years ago when I moved to Oxford. So I had been there, um, every now and then, maybe a day trip, something like that, going through the Delta, um, just passing through to somewhere else. But the Mm -hmm. first time I really got to spend a lot of time there was my first year at Ole Miss. All right. And again, we're talking about the Mississippi Delta and Ashley's brand new article up, and we encourage everybody to go there. It's called The Mississippi Delta, One of a Kind History and Food. It's right on the homepage right now. We're going to go ahead and do y'all a favor and give Ashley a chance to tell you what's in her article. And it's got all kinds of great places. And I have been to the Delta numerous times, and it is a fun place to go. It's definitely unique, as as your article talks about. And you'll see for yourself, it doesn't take you five seconds of officially being in the Delta for you to look around and say, whoa, where am I? Because... You could take a bowling ball, Ashley. I don't know if you did this in your article or not, but you could take a bowling ball and roll it, and chances are it would probably go about 100 miles because the delta is just that flat. No, absolutely, (laughs) Um, and thank you. But, yeah, the structure of the article basically takes us um, from the north, the very top of 61 in Mississippi, south to Vicksburg, which is the end point. Um, of this floodplain that John just introduced to us. And it, none of the places in the article are um, new or obscure to locals, but to people who are maybe going to the Juke Joint Festival in Clarksdale or um, maybe Doe's in Greenville, which is huge. And of course, in the article, as we noted, Anthony Bourdain covered it on his CNN show, um, Hunter S. Thompson interviewed then Democratic nominee Bill Clinton in a Doe's franchise in Arkansas. That -hmm. eventually made it on to the very famous um, 1993 documentary, The War Room. So if people are going to Doe's, go into the Juke Joint Festival, um, Morgan Freeman's place in Clarksdale. I wanted them maybe to notice some of these more obscure places. So once again, locals aren't learning anything new here, but people who might be traveling to the Delta could easily overlook um, some of these stranger places on our way from Tunica to Vicksburg. Yes, and Ashley's article, amazing work there that you've done with this thing. 
And I do have to point out, your article didn't put it in here. I know you know the phrase, and I'm sure you have a good reason for not including it, but there's a famous phrase about the Mississippi Delta, at least where you can find it. Do you know that phrase? Um, I'll just let you go ahead and introduce it. Okay. The phrase is, the, where is the Mississippi Delta? Well, it runs from the lobby of the Peabody Hotel in Memphis to the uh, bluffs there in Vicksburg. And it really does. If you look at a map, again, I'm, I'm not trying to belabor the point, but you can literally see from Google Earth where the Mississippi Delta is located. And it, it's about right from Vicksburg to Memphis, and you go through that area right down Highway 61 with your article at y'all.com. No, you're absolutely right. Um, and that phrase definitely has a lot of truth to it. Um, something interesting people might not know is that the Delta was largely forested, like even through Civil War Reconstruction, right? Um, and that's what William Faulkner talks about in the story, The Bear. Um, mm -hmm. So they're basically on a hunting trip um, to these forested areas in North Mississippi that don't exist anymore. And um, the black bear represents like 19th century Mississippi, which is, of course, rapidly being lost. And then we had Parchman, of course, the plantation style prison in the Delta built in 1901. So this farming boom, I mean, of course, it was going on during the 1800s, but it, it was really forested it wasn't always this flat um, place that we're talking about right now. So it's gone through a lot of change even in the past 150 years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always this flat kind of, um, it wasn't naturally that way. Oh, ah, okay. Well, yeah. Ashley here is not only a great writer, you are a historian working on your PhD. So kudos on that. So here with this article and what you're doing, you're mixing in your love of literature, travel, and history, and more. And you can find this article, but we hope lots more like it coming at y'all.com. And I wanted to point out, if you go into the Delta now, as we've talked about, Ashley said they kind of leveled a lot of this stuff for, for at one time, a lot of cotton farming. In the last 30 years, the big boom in the Mississippi Delta was catfish farming. So if you look on a Google map these days, you might see little ponds all over the place. That's because there's a large presence of catfish grown in the Mississippi Delta. Speaking of catfish and things that you might be able to eat, let's start off on the north end of Highway 61, just south of that Mississippi-Tennessee state line. In DeSoto County is technically where the Mississippi Delta begins in Mississippi, but only a little small portion there on the west end of DeSoto County. Then you go into Tunica County, and you stop by the famous Hollywood there in Tunica County. I've got a photo I'm going to share, but tell me more about this venue. Great. Yes, locals love the Hollywood. Um, it is one of the most relaxed places you can go, even in the Delta. It is just the most chill place. It has a little bar. Um, you can get the classic like meat and three vegetables or shrimp, anything. The Hollywood is great. And um, Sun House played at the side. It used to be part of a plantation um, as much of the Delta was at one point. But um, the decor is also really interesting. Like everything in the Hollywood is historic um, and something to do with Delta farming. So it's great. I love the pickled beets and the fried okra. I know beets aren't for everybody, but they just really have those classic Southern foods. Um, yeah, for that. Ashley, you, you can't beat them. Big question. Your article didn't cover it, or maybe it did. Y'all just got to go to y'all.com and read for yourself. Okay, but the controversy about this venue, the Hollywood Cafe, is it really the Hollywood that's sung about in the song Walking in Memphis? I've heard that it is. Okay. Um, I didn't know that it was disputed, um, that it wasn't. I just always assumed that it was, the legend was true. Well, when he goes walking in Memphis, you're not walking in Memphis when you're at the Hollywood Cafe. You're walking in Tunica County, but it's close enough okay. to Memphis. I, it sounds like a better story. So we'll just leave it at that. I guess if we could get up and close and read that blue Mississippi Blues Trail marker in front of it, it might just cover it there. So that was one place. Of course, Tunica, Mississippi, also known for its many casinos 
or as former Governor Haley Barber would call them, casinos. You have those all over the Tunica area, and they're hanging on. Sports betting really is kind of helping keep some of those up and going. Anything else in Tunica County that we need to know about? Absolutely. Um, The Blue and White Diner is another well-loved local little place. Um, Same building since the 1920s. Um, You might have to wait a second for your food, but that's because they make everything. Um, And when I say everything, I mean everything. Also, you can get breakfast all day. I'm an early riser, but... How early? Yeah. Um, very. I also have dogs, so that contributes <laughs> to that factor. But if you like breakfast all day, the Hollywood pancakes are the best meal in Tunica. I stand by that. And I have been to, to the Hollywood and to the, the all those places, the blue and white right there on, I guess it's on 61 also. It has a little bit of an Elvis story as Elvis got in a little fight there back in his early days after coming back from a concert. I actually met a guy one time who was part of that fight, and they all fought Elvis because he, he kind of stood out. He was kind of an oddball back in 1950s Tunica County. I don't know if there's a historical marker for a little Elvis kerfuffle back in that time period. We leave Tunica, and then you make your way toward Clarksdale, Mississippi, and there you have the Ground Zero Blues Club that Morgan Freeman started. You also have the Crossroads of the Blues. Ashley Stinson, take it away with what goes on in Capaya County, Mississippi. Yeah. Or Cahoma, um, sorry. Cahoma. <laughs> Wrong yeah. one. And, um, no, Clarksdale is great, and I know a lot of people make their way to the Juke Joint Festival, to Ground Zero, um, but the New World District right there in downtown Clarksdale is fascinating, um, and the most fascinating business in the New World District um, today is the Messenger which is a black-owned, family-owned bar and restaurant. It's been open since 1910. Um, It used to be a juke joint. It's been through the Prohibition era. It's been through just about everything. Um, And the same family still owns it, the grandson of the original owner. The menu changes every time you go in there. It could be anything from a Polish, um, Polish sausage to an entire buffet. They only sell domestic beer, cash only, um, and everyone you find in there just about is born and raised in Clarksdale. So, of course, make it to Ground Zero. There are plenty of other great bars and restaurants like the more upscale Levons, um, if you've been there, but the Messenger is one that is often overlooked. It's absolutely great. Now, you mentioned the Juke Joint Festival. Do you know what time of year that's held? I believe it's in the spring. Okay. I went in 2018. And you um, remember it? It rained heavily, so we all were like <laughs> huddled in the businesses. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, again, that's in Clarksdale, Mississippi, and that is still kind of on the northern end of the Delta, but you can go all check right. it out. Again, Ashley Stinson, who's we're talking with has gone and got her Mississippi Delta passport stamped. Her article is the Mississippi Delta one of a kind history and food. And it's up right now at y'all.com. Absolutely free of charge for y'all, of course, to go read this great article by this enterprising early riser, Ashley Stinson. Oh, got to get the coffee in or is it something else? Oh, it's coffee. Okay. It's also like a little Ole Miss plug as well so oh let me see it um just alumni mug you know you gotta get a little old miss plug real oh, quick okay well hotty toddy to you we leave out of clarksdale we make our way not far from clarksdale you'll find marigold mississippi also in that same general area you mentioned earlier parchment so tell me about sort of that middle ground going from the north end of the delta into the central portion So Marigold and Cleveland are in the article. A lot of people know Cleveland, of course, for Delta State, which is a great little university in North Mississippi. Um, But it's also got a lot of blues trail history. And Dockery Farms is probably, I would say, the most important place on the Mississippi Blues Trail because 
so many great blues legends live there at different points. So Charlie Patton, Howlin' Wolf, um, of course, Robert Johnson, which he lived many places, but <laughs> just the sheer number of people who are blues legends that lived at this plantation on the Sunflower River is amazing. And once you get into downtown Cleveland, um, you can also go to the abandoned jute joint, Poe Monkeys um, in Marigold, which has its own really interesting history. But once you get into downtown Cleveland, there's a James Beard um, award-winning restaurant at the top of their Cotton House Hotel. Um, I went to a conference there a couple years ago and it was great, but the little restaurant and bar up top, you can see all of the historic buildings in Cleveland. It was just a great place to wrap up my Cleveland tour, if you yeah. will. Ashley, is that the hotel that's opened in the last couple of years that's a really extremely nice hotel? Yes. Okay. Yes. At one time, the Trump family was supposed to be putting that in there. I don't know who's got it now. It might be the Stinson family for all I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, um, definitely not Stinson. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's <laughs> Cleveland. Again, home of Delta State University right there. It's one of the really uh, booming towns in the Mississippi Delta, at least for things outside of agriculture. A lot of the towns are definitely agriculture heavy. Cleveland's got a little mix of everything with the large university and DSU located there. And then let's kind of make our way down southward toward Greenville. I do want to know, because I don't know exactly where this photo, by the way, plug to Ashley, not only is she a heck of a writer, she's a pretty good photographer too. So the photos of the Delta that we're viewing here, if you're able to watch this, are courtesy of Ashley Stinson. And there's the photo you have of the, the brick ruins, is that, where is that from? That is about 30 minutes outside Greenville. Okay. Um, the well, let's, go, let's go there now and I'll show everybody what we're looking at here. Okay, what is that? It's St. John's Episcopal Church. Okay. Um, I believe it's one of the oldest in Mississippi, destroyed by fire, tornado, um, and the like. And they have it preserved in a tiny cemetery um, right at Lake Washington. I see. And do you know when the fire was? Yes, I believe it was at the turn of the century. Okay. Um, the first few years, yeah. Okay. Well, really cool. Makes for a great photo. I know that it for sure. It's breathtaking. Um, Mississippi has a lot of little Gothic churches, actually, from the 19th century that are amazing. Yeah. Well, that one right there outside of Lake Washington. And Washington County, Mississippi, is where you'll find Greenville, Mississippi. Also in Greenville, Mississippi, maybe their most famous restaurant is a place you've already kind of given us a little bit of a setup for. Doe's Eat Place. Don't tell me you got to go into Doe's Eat Place and we eat one of them big old fancy steaks. No, I actually didn't get the steak. Okay. Um, but you went there? Oh, yeah. Okay. I know. Controversial. Yeah, that is. What did you have? Because they only have a couple things. I think spaghetti is one of the items. Um, their broiled shrimp <clears throat> excuse me, is amazing. It is fabulous. It has... Uh, kind of secret blend, they say, of herbs and spices. I mean, it's probably got 20 or 30 different spices in the thing. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. They've got like two or three sides, salad, bread, or fries. Yeah. All at Doe's Eat Place, which they are franchising, and they have other locations outside of Greenville. But Greenville is the ground zero for Doe's Eat Place. And one thing we still haven't talked about yet that – your article didn't get heavy into it, maybe because you're going to write another article specifically on this subject. But actually, one of the great things that Doe serves up is tamales, Mississippi Delta tamales. Yeah, I would say that's their most famous um, item or their best seller, probably. Mm -hmm. They've been made the same since the early 1940s. Yeah. And I remember yeah. when Anthony Bourdain went in there, they talked about the big salad bowl that the right. mother of the, the matriarch of the family would mix all the salads, and they still use that same salad bowl at the Greenville location. It's good. It is, I, I haven't, I've never been to the Greenville location. Every time I've been in Greenville, it's always been usually around lunchtime, and this place is only open for supper. 
or dinner, maybe I got that wrong for you, Ashley. Uh, dinner time is when they're open, and they're usually only open maybe Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, or maybe just Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Got a little bit unusual hours, but there's no shortage of people trying to bust in to Doe's Eat Place in Greenville, Mississippi. Continuing our conversation with Ashley Stinson, the doctoral candidate, if you will, and her article, The Mississippi Delta, One-of-A-Kind History and Food, is up at y'all.com. So we're on our way southward down U.S. 61 in the Mississippi Delta with your article, and you see all kinds of fun sights and scenes of the Delta. I love this photo here. Where was this taken? Thank you. I also love this picture, so I was thrilled when y'all chose it um, out of the selection that I gave y'all, but this is Nittayuma. It is... Um, some people refer to it as a ghost town because it has a population of about 20. But this is just a progressive era gas station right off 61. Um, they've preserved many buildings, but I was fascinated with this one. Maybe the color. Mm -hmm. I also love the progressive era. So, I've What is the progressive era? So that's going to be from the end of the Gilded Age, the 80s, 1880s, 1890s going into the 10s, teens, and into the 1920s. Hmm. Um, so this gas station would probably be um, in the teens somewhere. So 100 years old for sure. All right. Well, doctor, even though I know you're not that quite yet, let me ask you, since you're into this history and this specific time period, tell me what was going on that you've been able to find out in the Mississippi Delta during this time period, because there were a lot of immigrants that's why you have tamales in the Delta that was brought in by Mexican immigrants back in that same time period. There were Chinese immigrants. There's still a collection of Delta residents who have Chinese ancestry, and they still own stores and things like that. What was going on 100-plus years ago? That's a great question. Um, <clears throat> I'm also writing an article for History Today on Parchman, um, and the Delta kind of in the progressive era, so I'm really glad you asked. And as we mentioned earlier, and as Faulkner has shown us in his fiction um, in The Bear, you find that the Delta was largely undeveloped, even during the Civil War and Reconstruction. So the real boom area in the Delta um, is what you just mentioned about 100 years ago, from the turn of the century into the 20s and um, 1930s. And of course, that was before mechanization. Mm -hmm. Right. So we had a lot of sharecroppers, um, a lot of enterprising kind of people, uh, black and white, who were clearing this land, developing the Delta on their own. So the real cotton boom here came about that time. And a lot. So another quick fact that's interesting is that convict leasing ended around this time. So we didn't have parchment um, itself until 1901. The famous prison plantation um, like Angola and Louisiana um, that we've seen, of course, depicted in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, Cool Hand Luke. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we didn't even have parchment until 1901. A lot of people just assume the Delta's always been this flat kind of farming oasis, but I'm glad you asked about the period 100 years ago because that was actually when a lot of this change um, that defines the Delta today, that's when it actually was occurring. So great question. Man, with that kind of setup, I'm afraid to ask you any more questions, Ashley, because why not uh, why just leave it on a high note? But I'm going to ask you more questions, maybe not quite as good as that. By the way, Parchman Prison is still Mississippi's main penitentiary. If you are in that area of Sunflower County when you're driving up the highway for about four or five miles before you get there, they got all the warning signs. Do not pull over. If, if you pull over, they didn't say it, but you kind of felt like you might get shot. They don't want to have you helping out prisoners trying to escape Parchman Prison in the Mississippi Delta. But so many great figures coming from the Delta of Mississippi. And Ashley, you're not a native Mississippi, and I'm not a native Mississippi, and I've spent many years living in Mississippi, and you've spent time living in the Magnolia State as a non-Mississippian. I have to give Mississippi a lot of credit, not just the Delta, the entire state, but the Delta really, 
maybe shines brighter than the rest of the areas. Mississippi may not have incredible mountain peaks where you can go snow skiing like you can in certain portions of North Carolina, for example. It definitely does not have incredible beaches like Orange Beach or anything on the Gulf Coast of Florida or Myrtle Beach on the Atlantic Coast or all of Florida. But what Mississippi certainly has proven to be is one of the leading states in the country for the people, the talent, the incredible dynamic of people of all races and cultures coming together in Mississippi. There, how about that? I, I agree completely. Um, Mississippi is a place where you've got a lot of grandeur next to a lot of abject ruin and poverty, but somehow Mississippians still find joy and have a good time and can still produce something beautiful. And that's what Mississippi and the Delta is to me. Mm -hmm. It's in the midst of tragedy, of course, and we know this with Mississippi's long sordid past and civil rights history, but somehow Mississippi also um, created things like America's rock and roll, um, some of the best food in the country. And like you said, some of the best people I've ever met personally. So that's what Mississippi is to me. It's, uh, it's the silver lining, right? Like in yep. the midst of your struggles, you create something um, that no one else could. I feel like you and I are speaking at Mississippi's funeral here today. But <laughs> no, Mississippi. that's just me. That, yeah, nothing. <laughs> Mississippi's good. We're yeah, great. but I think Mississippi's still that's got a lot of life to live. Now. Speaking of life to live in Mississippi, you see all kinds of great things as you travel throughout the Mississippi Delta. And one thing as a foreigner, me being from the Carolinas, when I got into Mississippi, I'd never heard of the Bottle Tree. Of course, there's a place in Oxford called Bottle Tree Bakery. But what is the Bottle Tree, and where was this picture that we're looking at taken? Well, the bakery in Oxford is quite good. So if you yes, visit it is. there on Van Buren, please stop by um, there as well. But this is at the Tomato Place on um, 61 South in Vicksburg. Ah. And it's kind of a New Orleans-themed shack full of produce, um, Cajun food, really every tomato thing that you could possibly make. So that's where the bottle tree um, in question is located. And you being the historian, is it there some kind of uh, old tale about bottle trees? I've heard a lot. Um, I don't want to, I don't study like folk culture. Okay. Um, my expertise is politics, but I'm Ooh. with you. I've heard some legends and whatnot, but I'm yeah. not exactly sure what they mean. All right. Well, again, I guess I'm a foreigner. I'd never seen a bottle tree until I checked my passport at the Mississippi border one time. And uh, kind of a neat thing. But this place you're mentioning here, the tomato place in Vicksburg, you said has great food. Yes, it's um, it, it's exceptional food. Uh, you couldn't tell from the outside of the shack yeah. what is inside. All right. Vicksburg also, for people like me that like history, you know, Ashley, you don't have the monopoly on liking history. There's a lot of us out there that enjoy a good history read or going to historic sites. And Vicksburg is home of the Vicksburg National Military Park, which was the site of the 1863 fight as Union forces under Ulysses S. Grant tried to take over the bluffs of Vicksburg and split the Confederacy in two. He was actually successful in doing that on July 4th, 1863, those darn Yankees got the win there at Vicksburg and the South was split in two. But tell me a little bit about, I think you stopped by the military park on your journey throughout the Delta and that again, Vicksburg is the tail end of the Delta. So tell me more about Warren County, Mississippi. Yeah, the military park is fantastic. Um, you can go there a hundred times and not see everything that they have to offer. Um, the USS Cairo is there, which is a 19th century warship. Fascinating. Um, but I really love monuments. Um, I'm a big architecture person just as a hobby. So that's why I included the memorial arch that welcomes you into the military park. Because a lot of people don't know that it in itself is a 1920 um, historic neoclassical monument dedicated to both sides there that fought at Vicksburg. So the monuments are fantastic. Um, I will be going back. Well, I'm scared to go back. You'll like this story. I went to Vicksburg Military Park many, many years ago, 
And while I was in the Vicksburg area, I decided to purchase some kind of crazy little souvenir trinket, if you will. And it was a little wooden version that you had to build. And I'm not one of those kind of people, maybe you were growing up, that would build like model airplanes and things like that. But I, I saw this thing on sale there in Vicksburg and I bought it. And it was a wooden replica of the CSS Hunley, which of course sank mm -hmm. in Charleston Harbor. And I bought that thing. Well, guess what? I had flown into Vicksburg. So when I went to the Jackson Airport to go fly back out, I think, to Nashville, they thought I was carrying a bomb. So I, I've been uh, a little bit scared to go back to the Vicksburg National Military Park because they probably still have me on a list there to be on the lookout for. <laughs> and I still yeah. haven't built that thing, by the way. I never will. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. It's a it's, um, curse now. Yeah, I would think so. But that's my, my one and only story there. Where did you stay during your trip across uh, the Delta? Did you have places you stayed or did you sleep in your car? What happened? Oh, I definitely did not um, sleep in my vehicle, nor do I recommend doing so, especially in the Delta. That, that's a big no. Um, but I lived in Oxford, so I went all the time. Oh. Um, I've stayed in Tunica and Memphis as well and kind of gone places that are close so or known people in mississippi so i never um and i didn't stay at the cotton house at you know by delta state because i was only presenting at the conference for one day so i kind of i don't have the um the best info on the hotels in the area okay. that's well. that, this, yeah that's another article so <laughs> someone would like to assist us with the best places you can stay here's your um here's your open yes we we especially ashley ashley maybe more than me i stayed in the delta a couple months ago i made my first overnight visit to hmm, indianola because i went to itabina too but i actually ran around throwing the football on the uh, field of uh, mississippi valley state just for the heck of it but i spent the night in itabina no indianola see i'm not the only one they're they're almost beside each other but uh, yeah. that's the home of a, a nice little chain that you're seeing across the southeast now, Lost Pizza Company, which has tamales. It's good. Yeah, it is good. But uh, The one in Oxford, it, yeah, gets a yeah. lot of business. <laughs> yeah, it's right down there near the post office. I know right where it is. Ashley, we could talk to you all day, and maybe we should, but we know you got more important things to do. I can't thank you enough for – Coming on here today on the Y'all Show as we've been talking with Ashley Stenson, who is working on her PhD and has got a lot of uh, great stuff coming. And again, her article right now at y'all.com, the Mississippi Delta, one of a kind history and food. And I think we've definitely told everybody listening and watching all about how one of a kind that Mississippi Delta truly is. We thank you and we look forward to what you might be working on next, which, hey, Feel free. What, what, what's coming next? Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we. Uh, I think we've got a few more articles under our belt, so I'm hoping to do one on Highway 90, Ooh. like Gulf Coast of Mississippi and Alabama, so stay tuned. Um, and thank you, John, for having me. Hopefully some of your readers will go visit the Delta now. They See should. You. I highly, highly recommend it. And as I said, you and I both are non-Mississippians. It truly is a one-of-a-kind place with a great story. And what Ashley kind of did, I know you're an academic, but what you did here today was give us the Cliff Notes version. And you probably hate Cliff Notes. I like Cliff Notes, frankly. But there's a whole lot more versions of Cliff Notes coming from you and others as they write the story of the Mississippi Delta. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Thank y'all. <laughs> We will have more of the show all about the South right after this, so stay tuned. The Y'all Show's coming back. <laughs>